Richard Tice just on. Uh, yes. Yeah, he yeah. said, and I quote, absolute stitch up by the Tories. These two people, Georgie David, West Ham and Beckton, the other bloke, Liam Eastwood, whatever his name is, can't get it right, uh, in that uh, constituency, uh, you watch that one. Mm. Uh, they both came to them with budgets. They said, we want, we're disillusioned with the Tory. Yeah. He says, a complete stitch up. You, We've reached out, by the way, to Tory uh, headquarters, nothing. No, they're, they're obviously denying that and just saying it's all part of the, the sort of rough and tumble. But it's not the first time it's happened. Obviously, Gavin Williamson, obviously a master of the dark arts. Him well, with the tarantula. He did. He, he, very early on in the campaign, his reform candidate pulled out back to him. Before nominations closed as well, so it was on the ballot. Kemi Badnock as well, um, candidate pulled out. I mean, it's not for so. you to say yes or no, but you wouldn't put it past politicians, oh, would you? I mean, look, these are, you know, there's no love lost between those two parties and they're going to they're gonna pull every trick in the book. Uh, whether it's... But the only thing that stops me thinking it's a conspiracy theory is... Uh, sorry, it was oh, sorry, all big conspiracy, is the fact that it would require a, a level of organisation and skill we have been sorely lacking in this Tory campaign. Richard said that the, 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 the messages, the, 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 the resignation messages, were very similar yeah. and, and looked... I mean, look, I mean, it, they could be... I think, I think what I said to him as well was, does this teach you a lesson in terms of setting up a party? Should you perhaps stood in 100 seats where you'd vetted the candidates totally and thoroughly? And he went, no, I want to stand everywhere. Uh, people will say and they will say, you know, volunteers can attach themselves to political parties and it's difficult to yeah. vet, but, but, look, there will always be people it's, like that, And it's there? not the first time this has happened. You know, if you go back to 2017, when Labour were caught on the hop with this election, they um, ended up having a lot of uh, people who ended up as MPs who ended up, you know, being complete wrong -uns. All um, of, it's yeah. true. A Alison, all these attempts to slur reform will eventually be disclosed and I cannot wait for the fallout and the grovelling apologies. I have voted for reform already and others will do the same. This is the establishment having a go. It's so unfair. I suspect a lot of people feel like Alison. Look, I just think that, I just think that it feels like if you go on, you know, I'm going to say if you go on the BBC website right now, it's lead that story is leading the BBC website two days out of polling day. Um, obviously, Farage and the BBC have, have crossed swords already in this campaign, and this is some no mark candidate who's never going to win in a seat that you know had they were no hope of, that no one's ever heard Absolutely. of, and they're being treated like the Messiah. I do think there is an element of reform are held to a higher standard than other political parties, which is what he said. The Greens the have been yeah. littered yeah. with wrong uns in that you know they've had to mm -hmm. you know distance themselves for. What about the candidate in Leeds who shouted? Yeah. That, do you remember that council? Yeah, but um, Peter. Jeremy Kyle, you don't know anything about the establishment, do you? Because, let me tell you, the establishment does not want Nigel Farage to win. They prefer Starmer, as he is an out-and-out -out establishment man, a globalist, easy to control, and continue with the blob's disastrous foreign policies. <laughs> I mean, it's a, change of, it's a change of middle management, really, for, in the eyes of some people, isn't it? The blob. Yeah. Like you said to me the other day, 200 people will lose their jobs on Thursday if Labour win, 100 ministers and 100 advisers, the rest will stay the same. Yeah. That's what we're talking about, right? Well, that's, I mean, that's the, that is the, the system. That's why I think, you know, obviously Farage taps into something that people, is, is that frustration of actually, you know, is there really actually a huge amount of difference between Keir Starmer and Rishi Sunak right now, given yeah. that Starmer's been so cautious in this campaign not to say anything about what he actually believes on Brexit or he actually believes on what he's actually going to do on tax. He's just sort of... You can see why people get annoyed. Absolutely. Uh, one thing that's great in, in your papers, was it Jack that did this? Yeah, it's good so, old Jack. So, so, well, this is very interesting because um, a, a poll in the Sun today saying that Farage would get a huge boost, by the way, from Labour's plan to reduce the voting age to 16. Now, the Tories are up in arms, and I've heard them say to mm. anybody and everybody, if he does that, the younger generation that have never seen the, the true brilliance mm. of the Tories, they'll all vote Labour, it'll be 20 years. But this polling, tell us about this, because this well, is this interesting. Well, this is basically, under, with the under 16, 16, 17-year-olds, now, yeah, they've got 39% of them are back in Labour, but 23% of them are back in reform. That's more than they're back in the Greens, and it just goes it's sort of completely counterculture to the idea that you know all these kids are little lefties. They're, they're but not, TikTok and stuff like that is well, so yeah, powerful. So right? Farage has got you know a massive 800,000 following uh, post his trip to the jungle. Um, you know he has got a following on whether this is a Farage thing or a reform thing remains to be seen. But there's also if you're a sort of slightly rebellious. 17 year old and you don't like all the woke stuff that's going on and you want to annoy your you know your your, your friends and your parents you might might well say yeah you know what mum and dad i am vote reform you i'd love you. to hear that from my kids <laughs> they say things like, i've told you the story about my daughter when well, i went to visit her at university this is no word of a lie she said we're going out for dinner tonight one of the girls is 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 you know she and the girl said to me i don't like anything you say 
Right. Thought, well, I'm buying you dinner, yeah? Yeah. You know, like have an opinion. Um, this is interesting. Kevin Southampton, at a time when we need a strong PM of any gender, we're going to end up with Better Man Starmer, who finishes work on a Friday at six. Good luck with that one. Can we talk about this? <laughs> He's absolutely... He says, it's laughably ridiculous I'm being accused of being going to be a part-time Prime Minister. I want time with my son and my daughter, finishing at six o'clock on a Friday. Is that really with respect how far the Tories have fallen? That's like saying, we know he's going to win, we've got nothing left. It was a, it, it was a bit of a clunky, it was a bit of a clumsy way of doing it, look, it, it, with the way he said it. Look, no one's, no one's suggesting that, you know, Prime Ministers shouldn't have time off or, you know, time at the weekend, downtime. It, I think it was the way he was so definitive, like, I will not work after Friday at six o'clock. And he sort of said, "Oh, you know, I take my son kickboxing that night, and I, oh. you know, I go, to, I go and watch cheerleading contests with my oh. with my daughter and things like." That. I think it was just, it was a sort of, I, it was a. You wonder whether it's genuine or he's just trying to make himself no, out to think, be a family man. I think man. he probably, he probably is, he probably does have it in his in his in his diary, like his like his Sunday morning football. But I think it just sort of slightly shows it's it's one of the things that he's been so stage managed this campaign, he's mm. been so, kept on such a tight leash that actually every time he does go slightly off script, he does say something a bit daft. Yeah, it's going to be... Ri Listen, I, I, I'm i sort of slightly fascinated about mm. Thursday and what's happened. We, I don't know if I said this already, but you were saying something in the bar last night, which is really fascinating. We were talking about in the bar, oh, God, don't worry yeah. about it. No, no, no. <laughs> mate, mate, I'm not like, mate, I'm not like that. We have plenty of that, didn't we? No, I'm talking, about, I'm talking about this whole thing that... You know, we were talking the other day about how Europe's gone to the right yeah. and we're about to go to the left. Yeah. He's going to have to go to NATO, you were telling me, Tuesday, well, and then flying, Washington flying, if he wins. Well, he's flying straight to NATO in Washington to see, you know, all of the... All of the uh, you know, to the world leaders there, he's going to have to explain why he's not signed up to the government's defence uh, spending record uh, pledges, which have gone down very well with NATO. And he's going to be dealing with people like Georgia Maloney in Italy, who are extremely forthright on their position on, on immigration. They are very pro third party, um, third country processing, like Rwanda schemes like that. Yeah. Not necessarily Rwanda, they're looking at sort of northern African countries. Um, you know, and he's going to be slightly out on limb there because his, his whole pol foreign policy sort of mantra that David Lammy was building was that Macron was going to be the sort of big, big, big grand fromage. And he's now, he's no longer, he's, on, yeah. he's, on, he's a bit, he's on, you know, he's got his back against the wall. So That's actually he's going to build, have to build allies very, very quickly. He's very quick in to come out hostile, Starmer. In a hostile, yeah, in a you're right, he's very quick, Starmer, because he says, I'll work with anybody. If you imagine, just, just for a minute, again, completely unbiased, mm. giving you all sides, you imagine that a left-wing socialist prime minister in waiting is saying, I'll do with Marion Le Pen. I yeah. mean, you, you, you can you imagine Corbyn or Foot? I, I think the reality is going to be so different to what people expect. I've said my bit about I think it'll be a, uh, a low turnout. I think people should absolutely vote. I think there is fatigue in the Tories. But really interesting, just very quickly, finally, Badenoch and Braverman, uh, two would-be, uh, I would suspect, attempts at leaders, I don't know, yeah. have today denied association with Tory leadership campaign websites, although... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, there's yeah. a spy. But Penny Morton's so did Rishi, one... So did Ready for Rishi, when yeah, Ready for yeah, Rishi ready was Ready for Rishi was ready for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, Penny Morton's one's still up. Penny Morton, yeah, it, look, I, it's looking increasingly unlikely she's going to hold that seat. Is that true? I, I think so, yeah. I mean, it just... And will it, they get her back in somewhere else quickly? Maybe, if they can. I mean, but, you know, there are... There's, there's a world in which... There maybe not many safe story seats um, going uh, for that. Braveman, I think, has got a fight on her hands in the in uh, down in Hersey in Hampshire, I think, if I'm yeah, not wrong. Hampshire, yeah. um, Lib Dems throwing a lot of money at a lot of... Uh, Bad not safe, that. isn't she? Bad not safe, you know, if she, if, if she loses her seat, there really will be very few Tory MPs. Um, left, but I think look, there's two ways. I think there's two ways of skinning this cat. In the fact that if the result, as you think, might be a bit closer than anyone thinks, and actually it's not the complete thumping that um, they, I think maybe they'll try and convince Rishi to not necessarily stay on, but to basically bring me bring in Oliver Dowden, his deputy PM at the moment, if he holds his seat in um, in Hazelmere or somewhere wherever it is down that way, um, and they'll sort of try and go long and they'll wait for a little while, let the dust settle, go through the summer, and perhaps have a leadership election in. No, Maybe no. Could, could, could even go to December, which is yeah. what they did after the 2005 election when um, they sort of went long and it allowed David Cameron to sort of come through the middle um, rather than a sort of immediate lurch. Knee jerk again. reaction. But if it is a complete wipeout and they end up having to have a leadership election quite soon, it could get really messy really quickly. I stuck my neck on the line. We talked about it last night. Yeah. I think the Tories will get between 150 and 199 seats. I don't think. If you're I think allowed the... to bet on politics anymore, then. No, I, we're I, not I mean, allowed not, to. Not, 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 I'll, I'll give you six to one. That's a, it's not a bad <laughs> bet. But no, but, but I think. But but I think that that is in no way uh, complimenting the Tories. I think there's, I think the Labour Party will win. I think their majority will be about 150. That's what I think. 
Well, I mean, the, the logic goes that actually, uh, you know, Starmer actually weirdly is, you know, less of a threat with a big majority because he can keep to his sort of middle of the road stuff. Where it gets really spicy is if his majority is between, say, 10 and 25, and then he's still got that socialist cam group, campaign group of Labour MPs who can basically demand, you know, what they want to get. Who'd have thought on so. December, whenever it was, 2019, when that picture of Boris yeah. Johnson with his hand up, an 80 seat majority? 80 seat majority ain't what it used to be, though. It's you know. gone. Um, so you're doing Never Mind the Ballots? Never Mind the Ballots. We will go live quarter past ten on election night. Um, With the exit poll? Well, no, let the exit poll drop. Yeah, yeah. We'll look at it. We'll have some... I've got to write first, first edition of the paper. That well, you have, but also yeah, you've got to yeah. be the drinks to move exactly. between seven uh, and ten. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll let the dust settle and we'll have, <laughs> some, we'll have some analysis and then we will obviously be through the night on some website and then we'll do another ballots live from 8am with a this proper, man proper is, look. This man is the hardest working man. It's unbelievable. He